This is the second video lecture for section 2.8 on weighted voting systems. In this lecture, I'll be talking about coalitions and special voters. So just to remind you, a weighted voting system has several voters that are worth a number of points called the weights of those voters. And then the quota is the number of total points that are needed to pass a motion or a law. So again, we're assuming that all of the voters are either voting yes or no. And in, if enough of them vote yes, then the law or the motion or whatever it is we're voting on will pass. And if not, then it doesn't pass, it fails. So the notation is we have square brackets. The first number we write is the quota. That's the number of points we need for something to pass. And then after the colon, we have a bunch of numbers separated by commas. Those are the weights of the voters, usually listed in decreasing order. Okay, so in this example, we have a quota of 20. So you need 20 uh, votes to pass. And then I'm gonna call these voters X, Y, and Z. Typically, we're gonna use letters to stand for the voters just to make them easier to refer to. So we've got three voters. X's vote is worth 15 points, Y's vote is worth 10 points, Z's vote is worth five points. So because the quota is 20, none of these voters have enough votes to pass anything by themselves. They've got to work together and form what we call coalitions, or just a group of voters that all vote the same way. So a coalition to get something to pass. So in this case, X and Z might work together. So just remember, so our system is 20 colon 15 comma 10 comma 5. So 20, that's my quota. 15, that's the voter we're calling X. 10, that's the voter we're calling Y. 5, that's the voter we're calling Z. Okay, so X and Z might work together. So that means that together, X and Z have 15 plus 5, which is 20 votes. So because that meets or exceeds the quota, that means that if X and Z both vote yes, then a motion will pass. They'll win. So we call that a winning coalition because if they work together and vote yes, the motion will pass. What about Y and Z? So again, just to remind you, 20, 15, 10, 5. Y and Z are these two voters, the 10 and the 5. Together they have 10 plus 5, which is 15 votes. Now that's not enough to win. That's less than the quota. So that's not a winning coalition. But if Y and Z work together and vote no, then the remaining voter, X, doesn't have enough votes to get anything to pass. So if they work together and vote no, nothing can pass. So we call that a blocking coalition. And it's easier to block usually than it is to win because you don't have to have enough votes to meet the quota. You just happen to have to have enough votes to prevent anybody else from being able to get something to pass. Okay, so just to summarize, a winning coalition is a co collection of voters that can pass a motion by all voting yes, even if every other voter votes no. But a blocking coalition is a collection of voters that can prevent a motion from passing by all voting no, even if every other voter votes yes. So there's a little bit of a symmetry here, but it's a little bit harder to be a winning coalition because you have to have more votes. Well, how many votes do you need to be a blocking coalition, right? The quota, that's pretty easy. That's listed there right at the beginning of our notation. That tells us how many votes we need to win. But how many votes do you need to block? Well, you need enough votes so that all the other voters combined cannot win. So I'm going to use a little bit of notation here. So if the total number of votes we represent by the letter T and the quota we represent by the letter Q, like we've done before, so T minus Q, let's think about that. So the total number of votes minus the quota. So if all of those voters that had that many votes vote no, then there would be exactly enough votes left over. There would be Q votes left over. And if all those voters voted yes, then a motion could still pass. So you need one more than that. So if you have one more than T minus Q, then that's enough to block. The number of votes left over would be Q minus one just under the quota. And so that wouldn't be enough to, to uh, actually win. So this is our little formula, right? So that's the number of votes that you need to be a blocking coalition. Okay, let's go through a couple examples. So in this weighted voting system, again, we've got a quote of 15. So let's label these voters A through E. So I'm just gonna call them A, B, C, D, E like that. And again, my quota here is Q. So how many votes do we need to block? So that's gonna be T minus Q plus one. That's my formula. Okay, Q is 15. What's the total? What's T? So I just add up all these num vote numbers. So 8 plus 5 plus 4 plus 3 plus 1, that's going to be 21. Then again, having a calculator handy can help there. 21 minus 15 plus 1, that's 7. So that means that 7 votes are needed to block. You need 15 votes to win, but you only need 7 votes to block. So what would be some blocking coalitions? 
Well, any group of voters working together where the total number of votes they have is seven or more would be a blocking coalition. So for example, C and D working together, they have seven votes and that's enough to be a blocking coalition. Of course, you could have more than seven votes. You could have, let's say, A, D, and E all working together. That's eight plus three plus one, that's 12 votes. Still not enough to win, but definitely enough to block. So any coalition, and there's lots of these, right? So any coalition that has seven or more votes collectively would be a blocking coalition in this example. Now, we also have special voters that have some influence all by themselves. So for example, a dictator is a voter that is a winning coalition by itself. So for example, we might have a system where the quota is 51 and we only have two voters, one, vote with, one voter with weight 60 and one voter with weight 40. Well, the 60 voter all by themselves has more than the quota, and so the weight 60 voter is what we would call a dictator. They get to do whatever they want. If they want to vote yes, the motion passes. If they want to vote no, the motion fails. But in the system we talked about earlier, 20, 15, 10, 5, none of those voters has enough power all by themselves to get a motion to pass. None of these individual votes is 20 or more, so we don't have any dictators in that situation. Sort of the opposite of a dictator is what we call a dummy voter, right? So I'm not being insulting. A dummy, you want to think of like a mannequin, like at a, at a um, department store. So a dummy is a voter whose vote does not matter, right? They just, they sit there. Again, imagine a mannequin. They're not saying anything. They're just sort of stone-faced, and it doesn't matter if they say yes, doesn't matter if they say no. Their vote doesn't matter. So what it specifically means, though, is that when voters form a winning coalition that includes a dummy voter, you can kick that dummy voter out of the coalition and it'll still be a winning coalition. So in this case, we've got an example, 51, 26, 26, 26, 22. So even though the, the 22 voter has 22 weight, has 22 votes, that seems like a lot. But if you think about it, there's no way to form a coalition here that includes that 22 voter where that 22 voter couldn't just get kicked out. So I've got my quota Q, my voters, which I'm calling A, B, C, and D. So if I had a coalition, let's say with A and D, well, that's only 26 plus 22. That's 48 votes. That's not a winning coalition. So that voter isn't involved in a winning coalition there. What would be a winning coalition that would include D? Well, how about A, C, and D? That's 26 plus 22, sorry, 26 plus 26 plus 22. That's gonna be 74. That's way more than 51, so we're good. So that's a winning coalition. But what happens if we kick out D? If we remove D from this coalition, then we just have A and C. That has 26 plus 26, which is 52. That's still winning which means we didn't really need D in there, right? So, so let's say these three voters are having a debate. And, oh, what do you think? Do you want to vote yes? Do you want to vote no? And D says, well, I think we should do this. And A and C look at each other and they say, you know what, we're not really, we don't really like that idea. Let's get rid of D out of our coalition. We're still a winning coalition just with the two of us. So that's an indication that D is a dummy voter. Now it's a little bit tricky to find a dummy voter because you have to know that whenever you have a winning coalition, then that dummy voter can be safely removed. So you actually have to think about a lot of different coalitions to really convince yourself that you have a dummy voter. Now, we also have this idea of a critical voter. Again, this is kind of like the opposite of a dummy voter. So if you have a voter that's a member of a winning coalition, but when that voter is removed, the coalition is no longer a winning coalition. In other words, you can't safely kick them out because if you kick them out, you no longer win, then that voter was critical to the coalition. So another way of saying what a dummy voter is, is a dummy voter is never a critical voter. So to find a critical voter, so here's another example. So again, I'm labeling my voters A, B, C, and D here, and 24, that's my quota. So let's look at the coalition A, B, C. So my quota is 24. If I add up these votes, 15 plus 10 plus five is 30. 30 is more than the quota, so that's a winning coalition. But if we remove A, Right, if we throw A out of this coalition and we just have B and C, well, B and C together only have 10 plus 15, which is, sorry, 10 plus 5, which is 15 votes. That's not enough to win anymore. Again, my quote is 24. So that means that A was critical. We kicked A out, but now we wish we hadn't kicked them out because now we're no longer a winning coalition. So if instead of removing A, if instead we removed C from our original coalition, 
Now the remaining voters, A and B, 15 plus 10 is 25. That is still a winning coalition, which means C wasn't critical. We kicked C out, but we're still a winning coalition, so we didn't really need C in the first place. All right, so that might make us think, well, is C a dummy voter, right? Is C never critical? Well, no, because it turns out with this coalition, and I'll let you think about this on your own, A, C, and D, that's a winning coalition, but if we kick C out, it will no longer be a winning coalition, which means C is sometimes critical. It just wasn't critical to the coalition A, B, and C. Another type of special voter that we can think about is similar to a dictator, which is a voter with veto power. A voter with veto power is a voter that if they vote no, nothing can pass. In other words, they're a blocking coalition all by themselves. So here's a similar example. So 21 is my quota, 20, 15, and 5 are my weights. So the 20 weight voter, that's not enough to pass by themselves. They're not a dictator. But if that 20 voter votes no, then the other two voters, 15 and 5 is 20, that's not enough to get anything to pass. So if the 20 voter votes no, then they essentially can veto whatever they want. And we talked about the jury example in the previous lecture. So a jury you can think of as a system with 12 voters. There's 12 ones here, but the quota is 12. All 12 of those voters have to vote yes, or in other words, guilty for a defendant to be found guilty. So if any single one of them votes no, then the other 11 jurors cannot work together to get the guilty verdict to pass. So in this case, that any of those 12 voters has veto power. All right, let's look through a couple more examples. So we've got a quota of eight. I'll call these voters A, B, and C. Are any of these voters dictators? Well, to be a dictator, you would have to be able to pass a bill, pass a motion all by yourself by voting yes. In other words, you have to equal or exceed the quota all by yourself. None of these voters do that. A only has five votes, B only has three votes, C only has one vote. None of those meet or exceed my quota of eight. So none of my voters are dictators. Do any of these voters have veto power? So now we think to ourselves, okay, if any of these voters voted no, what could the other voters do? So if A votes no, so if A votes no, the other voters are B and C, have three plus one, which is four votes. That's not enough to get anything to pass. So A has veto power. What about if B votes now? The remaining voters are A and C, and they have five plus one, which is six votes. That's not enough to pass because the quota is eight. So B has veto power. What about C? If C votes now, the remaining voters are A and B. A and B have five plus three, which is eight votes. That is enough to still pass. So if C votes no, A and B can look at each other, work together, and still vote yes and be okay. So C does not have veto power for that reason. So A and B, but not C. And then which of these voters is a dummy voter? Well, again, this is a little bit tricky, but we can think about what would be the coalitions that could include any of these voters. Now, as you might expect, a dummy voter is typically going to be a voter that has a low number of votes. So if we're thinking about there being a dummy voter here, we're probably looking at C. So if we're gonna think about whether C is a dummy voter, we can ask ourselves, is there a coalition that is a winning coalition that includes C? Well, what would be the coalitions that would work? C by themselves, that's not winning. A and C, that's only six votes, not enough. B and C, that's only four votes, definitely not enough. So the only way C could be included in a winning coalition is if all the voters voted yes. Five plus three plus one, that's nine votes, that's enough. But if we then kick C out of that coalition, it's still a winning coalition. That's kind of going back to what we talked about here with C not having veto power. So that means that C has no power. C is a dummy voter because the only way we could even include them in a winning coalition, we could just kick them out and it's still a winning coalition. Now I'm gonna look at the same system again, but I only changed one thing. I changed the quota from eight to nine. And let's see what that changes here. Certainly we still have no dictators because none of those voters have enough votes by themselves to equal or exceed the quota. Do these voters have veto power? Well, five plus three plus one, that's nine. 
So the only way these voters could pass anything is if every single one of them all votes unanimously. So this is very similar to the jury example. All of these voters have to vote yes for anything to pass. So if any single one of them votes no, nothing can pass. So every single one of these voters has veto power. Which of these voters are dummy voters? Well, none of them are dummy voters because they're all essential. They're all critical to that one winning coalition. So A, B, C here, they are all they all have veto power because A, B, and C all working together is the only winning coalition. And that's essentially the same reason why none of the voters are dummy voters is because they are all critical to this coalition. Okay, so as we've seen here, the actual number of votes that a voter has isn't always the best measure of how much power that voter wields, whether or not they're a dictator or a dummy, right? It's more complicated than just looking at the biggest number or the smallest number. So what we really want to do is measure the actual power that each voter has. And the way that we want to do this is so that if we have a dictator, the dictator has all the power. If we have a dummy voter, the dummy has zero power. And then voters that have veto power or are critical to some coalitions, they have some power. So we want it to be some kind of fraction, some, time, some kind of number between 0% and 100% that indicates the relative power level of that voter. And that's what we'll be doing in the next section.